gave me a vision this morning. I don't know if you want me to, you know, keep that to myself or if you want me to share that. Um, Go ahead. Let's uh, let's hear it. Okay. Um, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty with behavior right now. Um, <laughs> I might, I might have you come a little closer to where the mic is because you, you sound like you're pretty far in the background. I'm going to do that, and I'll come right here in front. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no one needs to see what's going on over here. Okay. <laughs> um, so this morning, uh, the Lord showed me something, and as I share it, it might not sound... Um, as moving as it was for me, I actually, I couldn't even uh, record it because of the emotional, um, for some reason, it, it really stirred some emotion up in me seeing it. Uh, so it just had an effect on me. Sometimes I didn't do that, and sometimes I just see them, but this morning there was a, quite a stirring within me regarding what I saw, but uh, as this as this uh, vision began, it was a pointed view from a car driving. And as I was seeing inside this car, I could see out the windows, and it was very uh, dark outside as, as as the car was driving. And it was driving down a highway, and I could see out the window and see in the darkness. That there were shadows of pyramids in, in a city of today. And then as the car continued to move forward down this highway and cities were sort of being shown outside the window, the darkness was revealed to me that it wasn't just darkness because there was no light. It was darkness because it was under a shadow of smoke um, and ash. And the, uh, the smoke wasn't gray. It was just black and like a deep purple. And I could see the ash falling like snow. And then I began to see that um, amidst these cities, there were great pyramids that were built. And, and, and one point of view that I got as, as the car was driving was um, San Francisco. And it was on fire. Um, and it, it, just was, it, it was like embers to see the trees that had burned in the fire that was just had already consumed them but still was born to light uh, and um, I'm just very solemn just driving through this particular direction with the um, everything on fire anyway and so this was just the, uh, the car driving through this, this type of city, pyramids, and, and, and smoke and ash. And then the very next perspective I got was a man, and he was walking in a different direction than that car was driving. In fact, he was walking in the complete opposite direction of, of what was taking place in, in the city. And the atmosphere completely changed. It was almost... Um, I forget it in contrast to maybe that's the right word um, to what was taking place prior. This place was full of snow and there was a blanket of snow on the trees and the ground. And so this man was walking actually. He was walking on either what one was a road or a, or a pretty wide path. And he was in a like a parka that was white, but the hood was lined with fur. And he was walking on the path and he had. Um, before him, he had, um, you could see that the path had a little bit of a straight down and then dip back up. So it was like just a little hill that was very, very steep. So that's what was in front of him. Um, and so in his hand, he had this map. So he opens up this map. And then he looks over the map, but then he rolls it back up. And throws it into the sky and it becomes the sky. So there's a huge map in the sky and it is filled with information. Um, 
and direction already on the map. So it wasn't just a map of some sort of terrain, direction, guidance, leaping inside this map, but now it was all across the sky. So at this point, this man starts to go down this steep, it's really steep. So it's almost like he sort of slides down into this little, um, I don't know what to call it, it's like a little, almost like a deep hole, but it's part of the path. Anyway, and so he gets down in the path, and then once he's down there, he starts to go up the other side, but you can see that what happened was he took, there was a few different ways that he, he got up the other side. The first way I saw that he had those kind of snowshoes with the um, spikes in it, and like the hook thing that you kind of hook into snow to climb, and he climbed up. I also saw him, again, starting from the bottom and going up on a ladder. And then the third thing that I saw is that he almost it was almost like, um, you know, when people skateboard, they kind of take the skateboard up one side, they go down the middle and go up the other side. So he almost like slid down in the middle and went up the other side, sort of like he would like on a skateboard. I hope that part makes sense. Anyway, so then he's up on the other side of this little valley experience. And the path is basically straight before him now. And he's got this map in the sky. And he begins to... Um, immediately skate on this path, like with, with, with skates. But the skates, they have like a spark to them. I don't know what that represents. I just know that he was going very fast on these skates. And he was still um, wearing what he was wearing. But after a specific amount of time, his clothes actually changed. And he was now in, um, I guess what was what an Olympic skater might wear, where it's sort of like a spandex type outfit and a number on his back. Um, the number was not clear. I know that there might have been eight and seven in it. Uh, maybe a five or one, a three maybe. Um, anyway, so the number is on his back. And he's skating fast, very, very fast towards where he's headed. Um, and then at this point, he... He abruptly, he might have actually, no, 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 I forgot this part. He, he changed his, also the, the pattern of, of, of what he was, how he was getting there. Originally on skates, now on skis. Um, but still going at a very rapid pace towards the end of where he was headed. And at this point, um, he stops abruptly at the end. And this is so not an emotional thing that is, is happening in the vision. It caused me to recognize, like, you're on holy ground right now. You are in a place where you need to um, be respectful of, you know, the Lord and His holiness and all of that. That's the, that's the feeling that came over me very strongly. Because at this point, the man, he, he stopped and he looked up at the sky, and now it's a night sky, and it has constellations. And the man, he lifts up his hands, and he begins to put his fingers on these constellations. And as he does that, it might be hard to explain, he, kind of, he moves his hands in a form that almost twists it in, in a pattern of like a constellation, like a Milky Way, the galaxy, if you see a spiral galaxy, he sort of twists it into this galaxy shape. And after he does that, it changes into something I'm not sure I could describe. Um, the best way for me to describe it in like my human words would be it was a whole bunch of different colored stones now. And then the next thing that happened is as soon as it twisted and it changed into this new um, visual for me, he basically took his hands open face um, in front of him and then he pulled that entire scene down in front of him underneath his feet so that he was standing on it. So now he's on this platform. He's no longer touching the earth. And he's taking steps and walking on these stones, these different colored stones. And this process, this is him doing this, was, it was just very deep and rich and um, full. Uh, I wish I had seen the words to explain what was happening at this point. But all I can say, I guess, is that it 
It has it helps it holds a very significant spiritual um, meaning that I obviously don't know, but it, the what it created within my spirit was something of like holy ground type of feeling and um, something was happening here in a, in, in a powerful, powerful way. And it was very like humbling and, and, and quiet and beautiful, um, which is, I feel bad because it, I can't express it very well. And I can't like show you what I saw. So it seems very plain, but it wasn't in a vision. So I hope that that, I hope that that is, is okay. But that was mm. it. And do you have any, uh, I know you're mentioning the the transition and being on holy ground as a significant part of the vision. Do you have any other um, insight or interpretation of those things? I don't think that I, I do. Um, I think everything is just speculation. I know that uh, what I saw before I saw that man with the peer, like I, 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 I feel like I, I not already said this, but when the Lord shows me things, I have some sort of reaction. But I felt very connected to this vision, not me personally, but me, like spiritually seeing the pyramids of Babylon in a way, you know, yeah. just sitting right on top of these cities that we see every day. Um, it was almost like. <laughs> When you, in those movies where you feel like alien ships come and they take over and they're like hovering over these cities, it's like, you know, this right. wasn't here before, you know, it didn't belong, but it's been there for all along, but now you see it. It's almost like something, something showed up that was always there that wasn't there before, but it really was there. And you can see the truth of the destruction of what it's doing and causing. And it just was so harmful and so devastating. Um, so anyway. Mm. Amen. Brother John, you have any any insight there? No, I, I don't think I do. Uh, at this time, I, I definitely would like to kind of listen again and, and study that in prayer for a while. Hmm. Yeah. Um, A lot of details there, obviously, and I, I see, uh, you know, the, the overall, um, <clears throat> it's interesting you have the, the, the two opposing directions, you know, the car moving toward those dark, shadowy cities, you know, toward the destruction. And then, of course, one, the man who's walking away from it, um, dress in, in white, I think, you know, indicative of two different courses of life, uh, two, two different representations of life. And then um, something that stood out to me as well is the transition, Nicole, I think when you were saying that, you know, there the, the, in the vision, the, the, the moment that you came to that sense of being on holy ground uh, around the time when he pulled the scene um, below him, under his feet. Um, you know, I, I, naturally, you know, Isaiah's encouragement to flee from Babylon, to come to the Lord, you know, to return to the Lord. And God's plea to the people, to his people, is come out of her, my people. Um. And then that transition that takes place is really interesting because it's a, it's a transition of power and authority. You know, what was in one realm comes under the feet of the new man. And he begins to operate in a different realm, you know, that in a sense is not just pulling something down, but also rising up over, um, <clears throat> one from from the earth uh to the heavenly realm so be interested too to see you know what brother john and emmanuel may have a sense of after getting some time to to listen to that but thank you for sharing sister definitely a meaningful vision um 
uh, as as it is many times with the things that the Lord gives to you, a close correlation to the work of God and the fulfillment of God's work um, in his people. Well, Brother Andy, you're you're sitting there quite astute and ready to share, I think. I'm still here. <laughs> I was just uh, oh, and let us with you. So you guys go ahead. I was listening to the that vision and mm. um something that uh, I th- I hope I got it right. I was I was a few times there. I was I was having a hard time hearing all the little details and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> the man that was dressed in white going the opposite direction. Mm. He his clothes changed mm. into almost like a almost like a ice skater's outfit. I think is what she said, I, or, uh, or like the, something like an Olympian, like an Olympian. And then she was like describing the fact that he was moving through the the place that he was in 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 like different different ways anyway i've just i for some reason i've got the like kind of got this this mental picture of that he was moving faster Mm -hmm. and and more athletically i don't i don't know (laughs) It kind of gave me a picture, like a, a mental picture of somebody who's an athlete moving and doing athletic, uh, doing different kinds of sports, different kinds of sports or something like that. Mm. Uh, skateboard too. He was moving like he was on a skate up one side and then down the other side. And mm. Anyway, I, the, the Bible several times you know denotes or likens our our christian walk or christian faith you know to a boxer to an athlete you know running the race and right and stuff like that so Mm. i was thinking about that and thinking about that we're wearing the you know the right clothing and we're doing the right uh running you know we're doing the right movements and stuff like that too so i felt like Mm. it was an encouragement to me that way yeah 